ICAC, Independent Commission Against Corruption, was founded in 1974. Before 1997, the ICAC was only responsible to the governor of Hong Kong, and after that it is only responsible to the chief executive of Hong Kong. This ensures ICAC is independent of other government departments. Besides, there is an L group to look into the corruption and undisciplined issue of ICAC. This structure makes sure that government departments and ICAC will be both corruption-free. ICAC adopts a three-prong approach, including three departments responsible for law enforcement, prevention, and education. Operations Department is responsible for making charges of corruption practice. Corruption Prevention Department is responsible for investigating the usual procedures of governmental departments and public organizations and providing suggestions to them that can help prevent corruption. Besides, the department also gives advice to private organizations and individuals. On the other hand, Community Relations Department is responsible for the education of anti-corruption in the society. Recently, the reputation of ICAC is in a downturn. According to the ICAC Complaints Committee, there has been a rise in the number of complaints. In 2016, ICAC received 27 complaints involving 68 accusations, which increased 42% and 33% respectively. The media are also fraught with negative news about ICAC. This leads to a new question. Is ICAC still functioning and performing its anti-corruption campaigns properly? It should be noted that we should never trust the media completely. Sometimes media do not fully reflect the truth because the truth may not grab audience attention, which is not ideal for boosting their profit and reputation. Therefore, although an increase in the complaints and accusations against ICAC has increased recently, it could be attributed to the negative impact from the media. Yet, it also should be noted that an unusual incident happened in 2016. Rebecca Li Bulan, the acting head of ICAC Operations Department, resigned after the UGL incident, which the former chief executive Lan Chen Ying was suspected of committing corruption of receiving $15 million. The ICAC Commissioner Simon Peck, who was nominated by Learn, claimed that he demoted Li with his own judgment. However, it has aroused suspicion in the public that Learn was behind the scene manipulating ICAC. However, we learned that from an ICAC regional office that L Group and the Complaints Committee both act as internal organs that investigate and ensure the integrity of ICAC. However, detailed information about both groups are not disclosed to the public to ensure the functionality of the respective groups. This branched out another question, transparency. From the citizens' perspective, to ensure that ICAC has the full support from the people, it should be noted that transparency is one of the major criteria that people consider whether they should entrust ICAC to carry out the responsibility of maintaining a clean environment for Hong Kong people. However, from ICAC's point of view, maintaining the confidentiality of the groups reduces the probability that the committee's members to be involved in the corruption. As the composition of the committee remains anonymous, People committed corruption would therefore be almost impossible to bribe the corresponding committee members. What about China? How is the anti-corruption there like? We have conducted an interview with a Chinese state functionary to gain deeper insights into China. This must be a difficult time for you, Mr. Bektaga, as you were sentenced to life imprisonment. Why would you like to accept this interview? I feel myself very lucky as my offense will lead to a death penalty while I was just sentenced to life imprisonment. It is my responsibility to accept this consequential example for my colleagues to end corruption tactics. In addition, I am accountable for my past actions as it has damaged public interest. I am sure that you could contribute a lot to the current anti-corruption campaign. Can you tell us when did the corruption tactics begin and why did you commit to corruption during your terms of service? Rampant corruption has been observed since the economic reform. Corruption issue was not serious uh, before the reform. Personally, I did not think the corruption has a negative consequence on economic growth, despite the traditional correlation between corruption and economic performance during my time of service. Can you further elaborate or is this claim based on your personal experience? Well, according to my observation, my cooperation with the business sector has facilitated their development by lowering trade barriers, as this has helped promote economic growth. I believe that it was my right to gain benefit from this area for my contribution. Moreover, I thought this would not create a big burden to state treasury. Just now we know about your reasons to a discount of profit, but are there any changes in the method how you get money from corruption from time to time? As I am an official since the reformation of China, I should better start from there. Since the economic reform in the 1970s, China has experienced enormous economic growth, causing uh, in a huge difference between nominal and market value. As a result, being for profit can be captured without damaging the economy significantly. In addition, it is a common practice among state functionaries during my time of service. As the marketization proceeds, the Chinese economy has become more closely linked to the international economy. 
Therefore, the exchange of profit could be carried out more secretly. For example, the entry could channel money to our foreign bank account. Besides, we have also formed an organization in order to assist them more effectively so that we can also gain more profit from them. If or not, what you did in the past are considered as coercion as defined in the Chinese criminal law, and this is the reason why you are going to jail. Now tell me about how you and your colleagues usually do to avoid arousing suspicion, while Chinese government is accused of lack of sufficient regulation for anti court For anti corruption what is your opinion on the definition of coercion provided by the CCL? In my opinion, I do find the definition of coercion in China sufficient, as this has covered economic coercion and administrative negligence. The definition of coercion described by the CCL is one of the most comprehensive definitions across the globe, in which implementation is problematic. Can you talk and point out any loopholes in the anti corruption regulations to prevent similar cases? Well, the policy concerning anti corruption is improving from time to time, but it seldom covers similar officials. Also, only corruption cases in one more than 100,000 yuan will be classified as Yao'an and be taken seriously. So, if I pay more attention to the amount of money gained, it is not likely that my case will be investigated in high priority. Apart from regulation loophole, anti corruption is rather weak on implementation. As the CCPI is under an answer to the Communist Party of China, the CCPI less independent from the party. In addition, CCPI tends to overlook high ranking officials as it requires PSC approval for the investigation, while CCPI only conducts investigation on party discipline and issue regulation. This has limited jurisdiction on criminal prosecution. It is because prosecution is executed by the People's Court. As a result, 6% of the case are punished leading. Also, under the dual leadership system, it is hard for local PSC members to investigate local officials who have control themselves. The CISPAS CCPI is in fact not effective to monitor the local official. Besides CCPI, there is Ministry of Supervision that are accountable for inspect and investigate offense of, of administrative discipline, recommend and impose administrative sanction prior to 1993. It has further illustrated the fact that China is weak on implementation rather than the lack of sufficient regulation and monitoring organizations from past to present. Thank you for your time. And would you like to have any thanks to the public and government? I'm sorry. Sorry for my past actions. I sincerely apologize to the party, public, and my subordinates. Indeed, the ICAC is a much more advanced system in anti-corruption when compared to CCDI in terms of education, independence, and operation. The CCDI can take reference to the above aspect of ICAC to improve their own system. For education, we all know that it is essential to educate the public about the evil of corruption. However, this kind of education are rarely seen in mainland China, as the education concerning corruption is mainly targeted at official, and there isn't an official organization or department specialized in that. Hence, the Chinese government can take reference from the Community Relation Department of ICAC to set up a similar institution and give more community education to the general public, such that the atmosphere of corruption can be uprooted from the society. For independence, ICAC is less likely to be interfered because of political reasons as it only answers to the chief executive and is not under any borough of government. This enables ICAC to work independently that the decision making will not be affected by other government officials so that the investigation of case will not be biased in favor of any government official or department. However, CCDI answers to the CCP. Local DIC is under the local party secretary and the CCDI is led by the central committee of CCP. Therefore, CCDI cannot effectively investigate the corruption of party members as they are involved in decision-making of case opening. This shows that the operation of CCDI is easily affected by political wills that the party leaders would use CCDI to eliminate political opponents and shield their allies from investigation. As a result, the effectiveness of anti-corruption is hindered. Besides comparing with the ICAC, CCDI lacks an internal monitoring units or non-executive government organization that can monitor it. Therefore, CCDI lacks accountability that abuse of power is more likely to occur inside it. In view of this, Chinese government should set up such department. For corruption, as we can see from some report, most of the cases in China is handled by the CCDI and cases are most likely result in party punishment but not legal punishment. These milder punishment make official less risky to commit corruption. Besides, only cases involve more than 100,000 yuan will be classified as Yao An and go under investigation. These factors create a relatively safe environment for the official to practice corruption. Thus, it is necessary to fix these loophole. A possible way to achieve this would be learn from the experience of ICAC. This implies that CDIC should investigate all corruption cases whenever there is enough evidence regardless of the money involved. In addition, the cases should not be only handled by mostly inside the party, but should also handled over to the Procuratory of Legal Punishment. This could pose a threat to the official to stop them from corruption.